in the chat box. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me expand this really quick. So this week we're talking about electronic communication. So this is text, emails, um, anything that would happen on a computer, a laptop, or your cell phone. Okay, um, and so we're going to start with talking about what electronic communication is. So this is anything that you send or receive using an electronic device. And so this includes um, signs, signals, images, data, sounds. Um, and so there are certain systems that we use to send things back and forth. We've got email. So we are, we're all familiar with email. Um, we have web chatting. So WhatsApp or Snapchat or all of these different um, resources that we have for web chatting and text messaging. And then we have social media, you know, we've got um, TikTok and all kinds of other things. Um, sorry, guys, give me just a second. All right, sorry about that, guys. So um, social media sites and then collaborative websites or collaborative software. So for example, Google Docs is a place where y'all can go in and work together on an assignment. And so that allows you to communicate electronically. Um, email is the short name for electronic mail. Um, and it's a message distributed by electronic means from one computer to another. Um, and you can use email for text messages, um, but you can also attach images and sounds. Um, and it's actually one of the first things that the internet was used for, and it's still very popular. So, oh, excuse me. There are some free email services. Um, you guys have Gmail. Um, we, as the staff, we use the Hotmail application. Um, there's Yahoo Mail, there's still AOL Mail, um, there's all kinds of free email services that are out there. There's also paid email services, um, MailGet, Redbox, MailerLite. We, we typically don't use any of those. Um, and so they can be personalized, right? So a paid email gives you a free, uh, the option to personalize it. So like, let's say Vanessa Brown at VanessaBrown.com. Whereas a free email address, you're gonna have to use the, the tail that they want you to use. So maybe it's Vanessa Brown at Hotmail or Vanessa Brown at Gmail. Um, the other thing too is how much can you store? So paid services typically give you a larger amount of storage than free email. Um, so with Gmail, you have a lot of storage, but you can actually pay for additional storage in your Gmail. Um, so another way that it's different too is the size of your email. Um, sometimes there's going to be limits to how much you can attach if it's a free email. Sometimes if it's a paid email, you can attach a bigger file or a bigger item um, into the email. There's also privacy. So you're going to be more likely to have uh, better security if it's a paid email and ads. So um, paid email tends to be ad free, whereas in free email services like Gmail and Yahoo and things like that, um, you, you're going to run into some ads um, with those services. Um, there's also three categories of email accounts. And so you have POPs, which are post office protocols. You have IMAPs, which are internet message access protocols. Um, and then you have MS Exchange. And so MS stands for Microsoft Exchange. Um, so POP is the standard email protocol. Um, this tends to be the one that, that email uh, servers use most often. 
And these will store your emails locally, which means they're like on a computer um, or on a phone and they're only in that place. Um, and this typically is what works with the free email accounts. IMAP is internet storage. So that means that you, you will be able to access your information from anywhere. Um, and so IMAPs store your information on internet servers. Um, and so you can log in from multiple devices and you'll be able to access the same emails because it's internet based. It's in the cloud, basically. Um, and exchange is proprietary, which means it belongs to a specific company. Um, exchange belongs to Microsoft um, and it stores all of your emails on a server, on a Microsoft server. So it is internet based um, and it is, it's a technology that is proprietary to Microsoft, okay? Um, and it is commonly used among businesses. This is what we use in our district for teacher to teacher communication. Um, so how do you create an email account? I'm gonna skip over this because for the most part, all of you have created email accounts. Um, but if you need help with this, please come in and um, please let me know and we can go over this later. Um, so things that you need to know about email etiquette um, and email etiquette is important when you're doing all kinds of stuff with email, when you're sending them, when you're formatting them, when there's attachments. So let's talk about things really quick. When you're sending an email, make sure that you have some kind of greeting and also some kind of closing. Um, I typically start an email with good morning, good afternoon, you know, good evening, whenever I send it. Now they might, it might say good morning and they opened it that afternoon. Um, that's fine. You may want to start it with hello or greetings or whatever, right? Um, but also a closing, a typical closing, thank you. Um, because you're thanking the person for reading your email. And so that's just a, a really simple, typical uh, closing that you can use. Um, you also want to address the person with the appropriate level of formality. Um, so if I'm going to send an email to Ms. Gomez, I'm not going to say, hey, Claudia, whatever, whatever. Um, Ms. Gomez is my boss, right? So I'm going to address her by her last name. Good morning, Ms. Gomez. Um, you know, but if I'm sending an email to Ms. Gonzalez, I might say, hey, Leslie, you know, here's the information that we talked about or whatever. Um, you also want to make sure that it, that in your emails that you check for errors in spelling, errors in grammar, um, especially if you're asking for something in a professional setting. Um, if you're asking for a letter of recommendation and it's misspelled, that's a problem. Um, if you're asking for help with somebody, you want to make sure that it's spelled correctly. You know, these are all things that you want to make sure that you include in your email um, etiquette or in your email information. Okay. Um, when sending an email, make sure that they're brief and to the point. Uh, read it out loud. Sometimes reading it out loud helps you hear things that are incorrect. Um, make sure you attach the correct file. Um, another thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that the file name makes sense for what it is that you're doing. Um, so, for example, if my file is um, list of students absent, then and I send it to the attendance clerk, then she knows, oh, this is the list of students that were absent today. But if it just says list, then she doesn't know what I'm sending her. Right, so make sure that, that the file name makes sense for what it is that you're sending. Um, avoid typing all in caps. That's considered um, yelling online. Um, avoid using fancy fonts, multiple fonts, or colors. Um, it makes it hard to read, and sometimes that person doesn't have that same font installed, so you're going to run into an error in your formatting. Um, Make sure that graphics are resized. Um, 
that whatever you attach is the appropriate size for it to fit on the email. Um, and that if you have multiple attachments that go in one email, that you spread them out um, among a few different emails. Um, please make sure also that you're addressing it to the person that it needs to go to in the to field. Um, and that in the CC, which stands for carbon copy, um, that's for people that you just need them to know what's going on. They don't necessarily need to respond. Um, when you're forwarding an email, make sure that you don't change anything, um, that you keep the subject title, and that you don't forward emails just because, that you forward emails that have to do with something that is relevant to, um, to that person. Um, you also, when forwarding the email, want to make sure that you may have to um, protect the receiver's address. And so if you're doing that, then you want to place it in a BCC, which is called a blind carbon copy. So for business email, the same kind of rules apply, except that you want to keep out unnecessary information. Um, make sure that you are formal in your emails. You would never write a business email that says, hey, so-and-so. Um, you know, Mr., Mrs., whatever, here's this information. Um, and if, if you're responding to somebody, please always make sure that you are prompt and professional, right? That if somebody sends you an email, you don't take a week and a half to answer them back. And then um, also in business email, make sure that the subject uh, is short and it says what it's about, that you're proofreading, um, and that you keep the signature short, right? So if I'm going to sign an email, I might put Vanessa Brown and then in the next line, Jimmy Carter, Early College High School. Um, I don't need to then put, you know, my address, my phone number, my degrees. Like you need to not have more than five lines um, because that's excessive. So some other forms of communication include things like web chat. And remember, these are systems um, where you use a web browser and you are chatting online. Um, now, this used to be much less common than what we do now. Um, Google Meets is a web chat option. Um, we have Zoom. We have Google Meets. We have um, all kinds of ways to communicate with each other now. Text messaging, again, is a, probably a, the form of communication that you're most familiar with. Um, and so this is on a mobile phone or tablet, usually over a phone network. Um, and so now we send emojis, we send images, we send videos, we send voice messages. Um, we send all kinds of things now where before um, texting really was just like sending numbers. Um, Social network, we have platforms like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, but now there's things like Snapchat and TikTok. Um, and so there's all kinds of ways for you to use uh, networking, social networking, excuse me. And then collaborative software is any application designed to help um, people involved in a common task to communicate. Um, so one that, that typically, or one that I'm familiar with is called Slack. Um, and you can share files, you can text, you can email, um, you share a common calendar and things like that. So electronic scheduling, and this is something that you all need to start thinking about and working on as you all are getting more and more, um, as you all are moving high into higher grades, but also as you all are getting closer and closer to being in uh, full-time college classes. Um, so electronic scheduling are things like Microsoft Outlook Calendar, Google Calendar, and Yahoo Calendar. Um, and so they typically tend to have one or more of the following features. You have a calendar that shows days, weeks, and months in a year. And you also have um, a place where you can attach appointments and files. Um, so this shows a list of appointments and it also will be able to tell you if there's scheduling conflicts. 
Um, it also gives you reminders automatically and it allows you to invite people and to share the events with them. Um, and so some may have calendar publishing where you can um, share parts of the calendar out um, based on a link. You, it might have exporting where you can export your calendar. Um, it might have customization where you can customize features. Um, I know with Google Calendar, you can customize like if it's a work task, you can make it one color. If it's a personal task, you can make it another color. Um, you can also show a group calendar where multiple people share um, one calendar. Or you can create separate calendars for separate purposes. Um, and so one of the main features uh, that electronic scheduling systems have is that they're web based. And so that way you can access them from different places. Um, and so the Outlook calendar allows you to schedule an appointment, to create an additional calendar, to schedule a meeting, and to share a calendar. Um, and so there is a process, and I'm going to skip over this, of scheduling appointments. Um, it's something that you all can look, that you guys can come back and look at the PowerPoint um, on creating calendars, scheduling meetings, sharing a calendar. Now, Google Calendar is one that you guys have access to through your Google Classroom and also through your Google email. And so there are some differences. Um, it is an online uh, calendar, so you do need to have internet connection. And there are some quick ad features. Um, and then the Outlook Calendar is really a lot like the um, the first calendar. So there are also calendar apps, probably on your phone you have a calendar. Um, and so you can use it in similar ways. You can create events, you can create um, uh, reminders and things like that. Are there any questions on the electronic communication